Welcome to another episode of Something for the People. This is your boy B Hunt, aka the Silent Prophet, along with my co host Big Country. What's good, people? Mr. Too Real for TV. Yup. All right. As always, we're going to jump right into it. Shooting the breeze. Is Generation Z becoming too soft, or are they just adapting to the climate? Well, I think it's they're being too soft, and I think they're starting a new climate. Because the only reason I say it is because everything now is almost like you have to walk on eggshells. If you go from the kids from they were born in the 80s versus the kids born in the 90s, even the kids born in the early 2000s, now these new generation like 2010 and all those kind of things, they're just extra soft. They got participation trophies. They got all those little things that you shouldn't have gotten when you were young. Right. And the reason why you shouldn't have gotten them when you were young is because they helped you build into the better person that you want to be. Right. Like when you got a participation trophy in football, nobody strived to be that dominant force no more because everybody got a trophy. Versus back in the day, so, um, well, granted, don't get me confused. I'm 100% behind you with the participation trophies. The thing about it is with it being here now, it's kind of difficult because kids are going to be like, well, how do you get people into sports to actually do stuff in sports now? Because a lot of kids, they, you know, they'd rather just sit in the house play a video game. I know. So now... In order for them to feel like they special or even attempt to play, they're going to want something in return. Like, what do I get? Well, you get a participation trophy now. So I feel like it's so it's been here so long, they're going to make that a staple in society. But that's the thing is, that participation trophy is basically the cop-out, the, hey, uh, I just gave you this. But you know, that's how, that's how the world works. They don't necessarily have to give you anything substantial. You Like, you ain't earned nothing. It's just the thought of you getting something, you know? A participation trophy is almost like getting a penny. Like, uh, if I gave you a hundred dollars, oh, even as a kid, give a kid a hundred dollars. Right. You dang near give them to do anything. True. Give them a penny. They're gonna look at the penny. And- I don't. I didn't come out here to just play. I came out here to dominate. I want to be. Yes, I want to be the best. The greatest, right. But kids these days, because you know, there was a lot of people who were playing back in the day who felt like. Oh, I'm tired of getting out here and losing and then getting nothing for it. And I gave up my whole summer. Or I gave up a half year. I gave up. They That's because you didn't try hard enough. Sometimes we say they didn't try hard enough. But also, sometimes you just not that good. Like, we got to stop making it where. Hold up. Hold up. Some people was just trash, bro. Okay, you were trash. Why were you trash? Because, okay, no. There's a difference between... You had natural talent off dump, uh-huh. and then you had to build your talent. Well, there were a lot of people that had natural talent that that natural talent, after so long, didn't do them no justice. True. Because so, that person that wanted, hey, I got to figure out here how to get it. This is what I'm saying. Typically, you see participation trophies and things of that nature for the lower grades, like the first, second, third. By the time you get to middle school, they really want to start winging kids off their participation trophy. They still like, giving that out, though. They ain't really giving it out for real. Like, you got state champions, they get a trophy, everybody else just go home. I heard kids over here like, but they ain't giving us a participation trophy. Because they got to, you, you start to grow up and start to realize, hey, they was lying to you, little kid. Ain't no, ain't no trophies for last place. Ain't no trophies really for, for fourth place or third place. You know what I'm saying? Man, it's like you, you remember a song number one by Nelly. Yeah. Because two is now winning and three nobody remembers. Agreed. So the whole idea I'm saying is I would rather you know it from the get-go than you just being like, oh, well, it's not fair. Now you're going to cry home to your mom and daddy uh-huh. and your mom and daddy going for in this generation, mamas and daddies be over here. Well, I don't want my child to feel bad. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. I don't want my child to feel bad. But if they didn't earn it, feel bad. 
I'm okay with you feeling bad. What it, what takes place is when you say is Generation Z too soft, I feel like they're too eager to quit. So if they go into something and they don't automatically feel the, hey, I got something. I pati-. Like, you know, they, they're they more inclined to be like, I'm just not going to go and do that no more. I don't want to do is that no more. But life isn't like that because anything you want, if you truly want it, you got to work for it. Right. But what I'm saying is some of them to try to get them in the mindset to see the benefit of actually just being out here, even if it's just for the workout, like the the act of doing should give you something for them because you're dealing with a generation who generally just don't want to do anything. See, that's just hard for me because... Yes, I grew up in that uh-huh. dog eat dog world. That's what we was were. That's what we were. And that is still what it is. It's a dog eat dog world. But we're trying to say, hey, if I throw some sugar on it, it's still dog eat dog. It's still dog eat dog. And don't get it confused. The 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 dog who understands that I gotta have the biggest bite, I gotta be the fastest dog, the strongest dog in order for this to work, then they going you gonna see them excel in life. It's just yeah. how it works. But what we got to understand is some people forget that, hey, it's some stuff out here that even if you just really ain't into it, you still need to go and participate just so you can see what it's like. Because yeah. working as a team, when people feel like they're not connected to a team in any way, they don't they don't assimilate to the culture that's American. Like, we, oh, no, no. You're going to keep looking at the manager keep getting all the big trophies because they get the bigger paychecks. Well, you should just be happy to be on the team. Well, I don't feel happy to be on the team because he got a trophy and I didn't. Or she got a trophy and I didn't. So now, it's just like getting your little monthly raise. I mean, your yearly raise. I'm sorry. Hey, here's a couple pennies so you can feel like your money's growing too. But we both know you ain't that, doing ain't, that cost of living ain't really the cost of living right now when eggs are 6 $7. <laughs> Man, I guess the only reason, uh, the main reason I say that we have to do something about this soft, because that's what you are, is soft, generation, is because of the fact that knowing what this world is, Mm -hmm. knowing how this world acts, is like, yes, I would love to protect my children from this world, Mm -hmm. but I know sooner or later, daddy ain't going to be here to protect you. Right. And you got to figure this out. And if you don't figure this out, out the world will eat you up do you now i have to ask a question in relation to that okay do you feel like that's more of a failure on the our generation the generation that raised generation z the reason i asked that the reason i asked that so i can put it in proper context i don't want to just Mm -hmm. so the generation before us the generations before us they would call the kids soft because hey You know, you don't have to walk over to the lake, get your water, and boil it. It come right to the tap. Y'all spoil. Oh, you know, when I wanted to be entertained, I had to go out there and shoot birds and hunt and do all that. And I had to do stuff that would be considered, you know, more manly or more masculine in order for me to have some sense of fulfillment. You know, I couldn't be on the football team because I had to go to work. I had to cut yards. I had to, I had to. And then because they had all those situations... They built infrastructure, even like they complained, but they built what we have today. Oh, they built what we had. Because like I said, they got tired of kids being bored. So somebody built Nintendo. They got tired of kids, you know, not having any place for them. They started building real playgrounds. They had real attractions. They like they kept moving. Our generation, we ain't gave we gave you Facebook and Snapchat. Like so we gave you ways to isolate and stay away from people. And I'm like, did okay. we fail them? Part of it, I think sometimes we didn't, uh, as our generation, we didn't teach them. Well, we didn't force them like we were forced. Right. And what I mean by force is was we had a time for everything. You had time for work. You had time for play. Right. You going to work. And you won't play. But now it seems like the generation, if it don't feel good, right, then it's an issue. And I think part of that would be on our fault because we didn't tell them, no, you won't get out there and work. Right. You we, won't rake them leaves. We took it and we we did not 
give kids balance. Our parents gave us balance. Yes. Like, hey, it's a certain way you talk. Like, you can talk like you want to talk to kids. Mm-hmm. But the... the Around adults. The bait, the, like, the opposite of that is when you get around an adult, anybody can whoop you, son. So mm-hmm. you need to watch what you say when you're around them. But when you're around with them kids, y'all gonna be kids. Yeah. Like, there was, a, like I said, it was all sectioned off and everybody knew the expectations. One, I feel like us as a generation... We lack expectation for these kids. And on top of lacking expectation for kids, we allow them to to go in and and seek pleasure from every experience as, as opposed to finding like the benefit to, hey, I worked hard and I'm proud of myself for going through that. Yeah. So I feel like because effectively, Gen Z, soft, we're hard at life, but we're soft at parenting. I feel like I agree with raising that. the next generation, we dropped the ball first, and now we're seeing the fruit. And us, it's, it's some of us out here like, hold on, hold on, wait. I see the writing on the wall. We got to stop this. The apple's falling too far from the tree. Yeah. Like, I know we thought we thought that when, when Dad was beating us over the head with, with belts and bats and all that, that, dude was, that was too far. But some of that still got a place here. Yeah. That's just like now that everybody said, oh, it's wrong to spank your child. I'm like, no, hmm. no, my child's still going to get these whoopings. They're like, yeah. it's just there are certain things that I understood the value of. I under One of the issues that I see a lot of times People took the value of certain things mm-hmm. and said, no, 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 no. I didn't like it, so it wasn't valuable. Versus right. it was valuable, you just didn't like it. Just didn't like it. Like, a whooping, don't get me wrong. Uh, I, If you are abusing your child, I would believe you are a trash human being. Right. Man, woman, child, whatever. If you're abusing someone, that's wrong. Mm-hmm. But discipline. Since day one, discipline is the one thing, the main thing that everybody needs. You need to know when to stop. But this we got to, because we got to, if we going to say polarizing statements like, because, you know, there is people on one side, don't hit your kids or don't don't abuse your kids, don't whoop okay. your kids. Then you got the other side. It's like, hey, whooping them is okay. Like, punishment is okay. Yes. Like, but abuse is not. We have to make a clear-cut distinction between the two. What would you consider abuse and what would you consider discipline? Abuse is when you're going... Uh, okay. I would say it like this. For me, abuse is going at it, taking your frustration out versus teaching your child the lesson that they need to learn. Whether it's spankings, whether it's grounding, whether it's um, chastising, whether it's Hey, make him stand on one foot in the corner. All those, uh, because I don't believe you just have to spank a a child. Oh, just spank him. No. Okay. Those things that I need you to know you have to do, I'm going to force you to do it. Right. Like, oh, well, I don't want to do that. Like, if my child don't want to clean up, oh, no, you're going to clean up. There's there's certain things that you do that even when you don't want to do it, it's the, the benefits far away. Your feelings. Yes. Like, So, that's like, back in the day, your mama, if you messed up or something like that, she, you know what? You won't clean up this whole house before I get home. And it better be clean. It better be spot. My mom would do that, and then you have to wash all the dishes. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. Sometimes I think it was theatrical, or maybe I did miss a dish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but she come in there, and she grab a plate, be like, this ain't clean. And I'd be like, I know I washed every dish <laughs> in this house. And she'd be like, this ain't clean. Do it again. And I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, don't get me wrong. It was, uh, Because I think sometimes as a parent, we've done things just to be like, hey, I got this. Uh, being a little petty, but then also that, man, you did a good one time. Let me get two out of this. Let me get two of yeah, do that same thing over again. All of them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm but, uh, uh, no, no, no. All of them. But that being said, um, we, we as people have an issue 
where we don't, everybody has a different measurement for yeah. punishment. Because if you ask some people, locking somebody up isn't humane, right? If we put you in isolated com- confinement, that's inhumane. Okay. Like everybody right now will outright say, if I took you or myself and I locked you in a cage with a whole bunch of hungry lions, that's inhumane, right? Okay. Because the, the danger is a high, it's a high possibility that you ain't going to come out of there alive. And then if you do come out of alive, you're definitely not going to be sane. Yeah. Right. So on one end, locking people into a prison cell, we say, oh, you know, that's just, you did the crime, you need to do the time. So you got to effectively set them in a cage okay. with other people who've done other crimes, just like you, right? On top of that, we're the same people who will take away your time, your life, which you don't get back. Okay. We'll take that away from you, but we won't kill you, though. Because a Be- lot of us don't believe in the death penalty. Okay, because of the fact of if you get killed, there's no coming back. Like, I know we talk about the Bible, we could believe and have faith in certain things, but until you've seen the man die and come back from actual death, not, oh, they flatline for a minute or whatever, mm-hmm. but actually come back from death, we know at this point on this side of existence, uh, of existence death is the final say-so. It's right. like... Because we all, but we all got to die. So that's why it's like, okay, death is inhumane for a lot of people because they know that's the end on this side. There ain't no coming back. Yes. It's like, basically, we unplugged this game system. We rolled up them jarsticks and we broke the system. Yeah. It's done. But if I put you in that cage... Okay, obviously, you didn't do what you needed to do on this side. Mm -hmm. But I didn't take your life away from you. I didn't turn the whole game system off. I just, okay, this system, okay, it's going to be put up here Mm -hmm. on this shelf for this long. Mm -hmm. We need this over here. Maybe it start working right after it's left alone for a while. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Well, a lot of prisons are filled with repeat offenders. Right, granted, we, I took us over there. I'm going to bring us on back because also, <laughs> I'm finna, like in a second, I'm about to switch topic. We okay. Know that. But going back to Generation Z being saw, we as a people have to come. I feel like we as the adults now, just like the adults in the past, have to come to a unanimous decision when in regards to how these children are going to be treated from this point forward. Because school shootings is up. Yeah. Uh, skipping schools has become a fad. Yeah. Uh, Truancy, dis- all those kind of things. Another a, a girl, I think she was 13. It was in the news. I got to go look up the article. But a 13-year-old girl effectively killed her parent, her, her mother, because her mother took her phone away. Mm. You know. Well... There's another one where they're talking about children having their tablets, their phones, and things like that have gone, uh, basically go crazy for them having those devices, those things. And we're talking about toddlers. Mm -hmm. We're talking about two-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old. And I'm like, you know as well as I do, no generation in the world could do what this generation has done right. and affect it. I don't care what race, what religion your parents were, would let them take it this far. Yeah. That being, it's, it's just the issues with it become. I put it, I put the onus on our generation and their generation, but more so on ours. Even though. Some parents didn't have the time to spend with you on a consistent basis. They didn't allow any of us kids to grow such an attachment to any electronic device that we would prefer the electronic device be charged than our mamas be alive. Like, yeah. So it's like at a certain point, I feel like we have to get back from like, no, no, no. 
the job can't have all my time. My kid need my time too. They need to know that you shouldn't grow an emotional attachment to an inanimate object. And I agree with that. I 100% agree with that. I need people to understand that, yes, working is important. Working. You should work. Mm -hmm. Yes, you need to work because you got to pay bills. But if you're initially, if you're working, you're doing all this for your children, but your children turn out to be trash. Like, what was the reason for you doing all this? It's a dual investment. A lot of people, uh, what this generate, and I'm sure I think one of your topics is more so about, but we'll get to that. In closing, for me anyway, on this topic, there is a, an investment that we have to put in, and 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 part of what we believe is money, because a, lo a large portion of this generation is all about the tangible financial gains that you can get from a parent. They like, oh, you bought me chips, oh, you bought me drinks and sodas and rides and cars and TikToks and wickwalks and all that, right? <clears throat> but because we're giving so much time to trying to buy them all the electronic and fun things they want to do, we forget the the true investment, which is our time to impute our knowledge and, 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 and try to assist them in, hey, this is how you navigate this life. Because yeah. I don't care how I don't care how many Ferraris you get, you know what I'm saying? If you can't control yourself enough to stay free from penitentiaries or if you can't control yourself to follow the speed limit, if you have, if you, those who lack discipline and control, it don't matter how much money or, or, or asset, well, or liabilities you obtain. Yeah. You're going to be in a bad situation. So, I close my uh, little piece on this one. Like, if you are if you're old school, and I ain't even talking about like old old school, but if you are a '80s or '90s baby, I know you remember this scripture that everybody, everybody, parent, auntie, uncle, whatever, grandparent, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're older, they will not depart. Right. The idea is if you don't teach your children the things they need to. You going to be teaching your grandchildren because your children are going to be somewhere else. Agree with that. All right. So now we're going to go in and just so you know, and in just so you know, nurse gets life in prison after admitting she intentionally gave patients excess insulin. So she's a night nurse. And what she would do is she would go overdose the patients on insulin and how she would do it is she overdosed them on the insulin and they wouldn't pass away till after her shift. So it'd be well after her shift, she's at home chilling and the patient will pass away. And and uh, I believe there's three deaths total. I, I read the article. I believe it's three deaths total and 11 people who were severely, severely injured by this lady. When they asked her why did she do what she did, they she's given no response. And and but only thing she will let them know is that her intent was to effectively kill more people than just so. On like I don't know what what she was thinking, but in my mind, I am saying so. It may not be exactly what she's thinking, but the only thing I could think of is oh they had their chance, so I'm gonna do the world a favor and get rid of them the easiest and best way I know how. Right. And the reason why I say this is, yes, as a diabetic, I am a diabetic. Yes, you. there's so many complications that can happen from diabetes. If your sugar's too high, if your sugar's too low, all these kind of things. You could lose limbs, you could go sterile, you can um, lose your eyesight, you can lose your kidneys, or like be on dialysis. You, mm -hmm. It's so many different things that can happen to you. You have a stroke, you can have a heart attack, you like you have seizures, all kinds of stuff, but she intentionally gave these people extra insulin, and you can't say, "Oh, she accidentally did it." Right. There's no way she acts because even if I give you like four or five units more, that's not going to put you into such a hole that your body can't come back from. You had to have been injecting them with a lot more than their average dose to. Stop them from being able to, their body able to regulate. It's just like anybody. If your body is hot, 
you start sweating because right. it's supposed to regulate your body. Right. If your body is cold, your body uh, uh, you start warming up. Shivers. That's usually like if you have a sickness, fever. Fever is uh, heats up your body to burn off that sickness in your body. That's what a fever is. Right. But I'm like when you take insulin, you give so much insulin, your body's not able to regulate and bounce back. So it's going to still keep plummeting unless you take some type of sugar or some carbs to bring yeah. that back yeah. to, to, redu uh, yeah. to reduce the insulin in your body. Right. So she literally did these things intentionally. No, and she did not. You can't say, oh, I gave like a unit extra here or two units. Five. Nah, she gave him a crap load of insulin and was like, oh, and you should take between 20 minutes, 30 minutes for you to even start to feel the regular effects of insulin. So if you give a crap load of insulin, okay, like between that hour, two hour span, mm -hmm. you could be doing fine. And then all of a sudden... Bro. Crash. Well, the reason I brought it, just so you know, is is more of a public service announcement, and and to have people understand that we can't keep sending people to these establishments and not having some form of monitor. I granted, I understand there's a hospital, and I'm sure in that space, they said it was a night. You don't really get that level of visitation that you need, but I, when you're dealing with people. And I just know when people see that, hey, I really shouldn't mess with that person because somebody, somebody care a lot about that person. They come yeah. every day. So it's like that, that monitoring, that constant, my constant presence puts people who wish to do wrong and do harm, it alerts them to be like, it's easier things out there to go and pursue. But we know how the world is. Most people, most out of sight, out of mind. True. If you're not here on a daily basis, in my life on a daily basis, I don't wish harm on you. I just don't think about you. Right. So it's like if you, like, for example, if it was nursing home, if you put elderly people in nursing homes and you don't visit them on a consistent basis, a lot of people forget, oh, grandma over there. Right. Grandma could be mistreated, being mm -hmm. done wrong, and you never know because you don't check on them on a consistent basis. And that's what be that that troubles me. It's people out here who go buy cases for their phones and and all they when it comes to material things that they value, that I feel like we've reached a level, or this generation has reached a level to where we value our things are are objects more than we value the people around us because a lot of we stop looking at my family is my status like my family being oh my family's doing good my family's healthy uh, healthy they're all happy that's that used to be the status used to be. people would go work i die for my family kill for my family steal for whatever for my family right now it's like you do whatever for these things, these phones, all that kind of stuff. Like, last episode, we was talking about that dude who effectively had to, he's put antifreeze in the baby bottle in order to, so he didn't have to pay child support because, of course, the child mm -hmm. dies and he got to pay. Mm -hmm. I was just like, what's more important to spend your money on? I mean, I get it. Some people have, they, you know, reservations towards child support because of the woman they laid down with but the kid didn't do nothing yeah the kid is literally here looking to you like hey yeah do for me man I'm, i can't do for myself because if i could if i didn't need you i wouldn't use you i don't think there's anybody who if, if i if i came out as if i came out the womb and within the next hour i was a grown man and i didn't need you i i'll move on i don't need nothing else yeah but because i'm in such a helpless state you know what I'm saying? But people will get a thousand dollar phone and 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 somehow that is that's that status of that phone is far more valuable to you than your own child. Yeah. It's just it's there's just a, a, there's, a, a, there's a lot of people that put materialistic things before 
people you say you love. Mm-hmm. Like, I wish you would just be honest and say, I love my phone more than I love people. I love uh, my lifestyle more than I love people. I love this more than I love my car, my job, all these things more than people. Right. We have to, at a certain point, we have to realize that we're disconnected from one another. So much so to where the value of life is just the value of the perceived value. Let me yeah. say that properly. The perceived value of another person's life is diminished so much to where we don't even value it enough to protect it, regardless of age, sick, like anything like family ties, nothing makes us want to preserve the relationships we have with the people we love. And that right there is crazy to me. Like, it's life nowadays. And I don't know if it was the programming of TVs, if it was the lack of family dynamics. Was it the community dying off and people uh, became so me, me, me? But it's like all those things that your grandparents used to instill, your like for me, parents uh, used to instill. Mm-hmm. I knew there were certain things I couldn't play with. Right. And I'm like, I knew there were certain things I couldn't do. And don't, uh, it wasn't a he say, she say. If if another adult said you did it, my parents going to be like, yeah, you did it. You did it. You did it. Okay. And we're going to fix that. We're going to fix that. But that's the thing now is like, there's so many people it's like, my child wouldn't do that. So you sitting here telling me that your child wouldn't lie to save their own butt when we know that everybody uh, uh, essentially, if it's to save yourself from being caused harm, hell, even from not getting what you want, you lie. Yeah, it don't take much. So you're not going to lie. So I see students that go to school, they'll lie to somebody in a heartbeat. And then their parents would be like, no, my child said they wouldn't do that. But what I'm saying is the lack of community between people, the lack of relationships. I re- I remember my dad talking to the next door neighbor. Like he just, yeah. I kn- knew his name, knew the kids. If he saw the kids doing something, he'd address like, hey, let me talk to you. This was going on. Like my, they was connected to other, even if, it was just the people right next door. Like, yeah. I know this person and that person. But that's the thing is, us as people are not connected. We're not connected. At all. That's why, uh, like, when certain people see somebody connected, they're, uh, it's like they'll always be like, what do you want? Like, yeah. you can't be like, oh, hey, you know, I just want to see how you're doing, you right. know, and things like that. And just be that. Right. It's always, nah, you want something. Was, I got to watch you I now. I watch you. I can't, just, I can't just come and be friendly. And that's what I feel like. That, that, that mindset has infected so many areas of life. Yeah. When it comes down to talking to women outside, for, the, for this younger generation, I'm like, I don't even know how you would go about getting a number. Unless you online and you send some photos. Because most of the time, I'd be like, if you go talk to a female... If she don't first try to hit you up for some form of income, like payment, payment to be in her presence, then if you if your car ain't nice enough, you dismiss. If 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 you ain't dressed properly, you dismiss. It's like you have to be on your A game just to have a conversation. And I mean, and even at your A game, there's a high probability there's more often than not she's not gonna give you the time of day and ain't gonna have any real reason as to why she did. not yeah. Just won't. Remember, uh, uh, I had told this one a while back on the episode where they were talking about, uh, they did a survey and asked men wh- how many things, what were the main things they would turn a woman down for a second date for? And they would basically list like five things. Like yeah, universal. Your, your attitude, um, whether... Like, even looks wasn't even the top one. It was right. like, oh, if you seem like you were actually interested in like this date, you know, are, uh, 
like, do you have somebody else? Like, those things that everybody wants to know. But then when they ask women that same question, they came up with over 500 different responses. Right. And all of them just very... One response, if he has a female, like a mother or a sister. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't even... At some point, this is borderline narcissism. Like, you can't be that into self that you don't want any other woman around. Period. Yeah. So I'm just like, we've reached a point where, hey, don't get me wrong, at we reached a point where we were all doing better and all had to get to a point where we expected more from the other person. Because for a generation not that far ago, not that long ago, hey, he bring home money, yeah. You take care of kids. That's a working relationship, mm -hmm. right? Now we're in a space where anybody can go get a job. Anybody can provide, you know, food, house, shelter. Like, both sex can do that, right? Yeah. And then we come, thanks to the generation, I really put now this part I put on our generation. We've dispelled the idea that men can't deal with kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, no, nah, it's... Most of us out here like, no, nah, I need to find some form of employment or find that allows me to be active in my child's life. Exactly. Like, I don't want to just be known as the guy who brings home money and gets the big piece of chicken. You, you notice that uh, more men now are trying their hardest. More men, black men especially, are more active in their children's life than any other race. Right. The idea is because we grew up seeing those things. We mm -hmm. saw our fathers working hard as hell. We knew what it was. They were working hard, mm -hmm. but they couldn't be there like they right. wanted to. So now it's like, hey, I got to have something where I'm making some money because I still have to protect and take care of my mm -hmm. family. But I won't be there for a game. Already told, uh, already put in my PTO because my daughter graduated from kindergarten. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't do this every year, but this is her first year first in school. And I'm that. like, I need to be off. I already unscheduled off. If they ain't going to let me off, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. It's like. It's my kid. I know and, you probably don't understand. You probably ain't got these kids. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to come to this job. Mm -hmm. And my baby crossing the stage right now. You you can't be serious. Exactly. You can accept me coming in a little late or not coming in at all today. Make a decision. And I'm like, you're not going to fire me for this day because you need me. Right. Like, so, and this is where I want people to understand. You have to start investing in your children, investing in other people so you won't lose that that out of sight, out of mind mentality. Mm -hmm. Because like this woman, she essentially, I killed three people. Why? Because I don't feel they're worth it. Right. Because nobody else care. I killed three people because nobody else care. I killed three people, had 11 more in the, waiting in the wings, but somehow they survived. Mm-hmm. But I killed them because no one else was paying attention. And that's and you could essentially you like people do these horrible things. They're horrible. I don't care if the person's in jail. I don't care if the person is in a nursing home. I don't care if the person is essentially just a trash person. But the idea of you just trying to take people's lives because you're like nobody care. Yeah, they can't prove it, or if they can prove it, are they really going warm? Yeah, so it's just how that being said, man. I'm gonna move on to the next topic, but effectively, just so you know what you pay attention to and what you put energy in and invest in, people notice that investment. So, yes. don't allow yourself to be so disconnected from your family, your friends, your life to where hey. Somebody can infiltrate and effectively take something from you that you can't get back. Because I don't care how much you think about that cell phone. They made multiples of them. They're going to put trillions, not, not trillions, they'll put definitely thousands of them in the local landfill just so nobody follows them. Yeah. You ever notice that uh, most cell phones have insurance on them? 
<laughs> like they have that first year insurance and then you could get insurance through the carrier. So why do you care that much that you going to put a cell phone, a techno piece of technology over life? We going to move into the next topic with that. I like that. All right. You won't believe this. And you won't believe this is brought to you by. As always, love to shout out my beautiful wife. Love you, baby. I ask y'all check out her product lines. Yanni like mine, Traces like mine, and Wasted Desires. You can go on WastedDesires.com. They have waist beads, anklets, bracelets, thigh chains, all those things that make your body glitter and shine. You go to uh, on, on Facebook and Instagram for Traces Like Mine. Traces Like Mine is a hair care product for black women, by black women, actually for all women and people in general. But you know how they say in the stores, they don't have a lot of things in there for black people. This is a woman doing it for you. And then Yanni like mine. Ladies, if you don't know what your Yanni is, look it up. It does not clean itself. So I ask y'all check out Arlington Elite Wolves. They are a track team that doing amazing things. They have track meets on Saturday. They've been teaching young people how to run track and take their game to the next level. I ask y'all check out Nate Price, Grit and Grind. He is a personal trainer and cultivating and working on you. He does a lot out here for you. He takes you from beginning step by step to the end. Um, Derek Kelsey, he is also a trainer. He helps young people to take it to that next level. He's helped a few people that I know actually get their scholarships and go off to college to become great athletes. I had y'all check both of them out. They're both on Instagram and they're both on um Facebook. All right, cool beans. I'm gonna give a shout out to Brittany Bossing Up Empower You. Mm -hmm. She's writing the books. She's doing the the speech. She she's out here, and who she's speaking to are the young ladies, and she's trying to let them feel empowered and know that you can be more than than what you see. You can effectively keep pushing up and you know giving the words of encouragement outside of that i also want to shout out tyler bailey luxury clothes by luxury guy when i say luxury i do mean luxury i also want to shout out my cousin mike or wiggly as they call him these game spaces but if you want to check him out he's on sob it's, it's not that way though it's not that way. It's state of being. And on state of being, I guarantee if you don't like what he's saying today, go ahead, turn it off, turn it right back on tomorrow because most likely he'll be talking about something that's more inclined to your particular, you know, beliefs and, and likes and dislikes. You know, he, he switches it up often enough to where, hey, he can he going to talk about something that you care about. Uh, outside of that, I also want to shout out these these two guys that I know very well. I know these two gentlemen very very well. They really come on. They really putting on for they for they people. And they really trying to push a brand and an idea when it comes to this relationship. And those two people that I'm speaking about is us, right? Right here, cool beans. And for those people who don't know who we are, that is something. The number four, D A. People, if you're on YouTube, go ahead, type podcast at the end of that. It's gonna minimize those search results and bring us up a whole lot quicker. But there's another way that you can make sure that we come up a whole lot quicker if you do that like, share, subscribe. And, and if you're on any podcasting network, go ahead and send us a quick five star review. You can simply type us up because at that point, that's search engine optimization. You make sure that we're at the top because you let the people know. And we care about the people because this is something for the people. If you let the other people know that this is something that you should be watching, this is something that you should be tuning into instantly. You can just type something for the people. You won't even need podcasts if we get to that point. So help us get to that point. And in order for us to get there, let me tell you that name one more time. That is something, the number four, D A. People. people podcast you on youtube and we on all podcast networks okay so don't even if you, mm -hmm. if you on any i don't care what <laughs> it is wherever you at if you type in something for the people pocket it's gonna pull us up guaranteed look for the gold line all right 
That being said, just so oh no, you won't believe this. Woman on social media says that if you do not make at least fifty thousand dollars or more a year, you shouldn't even be dating. That's just stupid. Like I I'm sick of social media. I I'm really sick of social media. It, Social media has been hijacked to be this propaganda for if you're not making this crazy amount of money, you shouldn't do nothing. Basically, you don't even need to live like, oh, you don't need to date. You don't need to. All you need to do is make money. money. We become a country of money hungry, self-indulging, ignorant People, mm -hmm. like, don't get me wrong. I'm not just going to talk about women. It's all of us. Like, Every one of us. Golly, like, you can't do nothing right now. Like, you can't be a good person no more because nobody care about a good person. It's not that nobody cares about... Well, my, bad, that my bad. No, no, you're right. Nobody cares about a good person. Till after all the other stuff. What also happens is to add to that, People don't believe in good people no more. In yeah. order to have good, you feel like you got to come up off a check to have it. Remember what? when there was there was a time where people did things for the love? Yeah, it was just people who just no no no. I don't. I'm not trying to be the biggest football pee wee league coach in the world. I just make sure I come out here so these kids know somebody cares. Mm -hmm. That's why I come out here. The basketball coach, you know, the basketball like, coach, like. The, the neighborhood candy like Yeah. Like. She wasn't trying to hustle you for hustle uh, for nothing. She was just like, hey, you know what? I'm going to get y'all this candy. I'll make sure I make enough money so yeah. I can get y'all more candy. Right. I'm, I'm going to charge you that standard convenience fee. I know your parents ain't going to let you walk all the way across town to go to the store. So I'm going to have it all at my house. You knock on the door, honor system. Here you go. Get mm -hmm. your Kool-Aid cups and your sour straws. And cool cups. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, but you ain't you ain't seen a cool cup in forever. What I haven't seen in forever <laughs> is people genuinely wanting to be around each other. Yeah. I ain't seen it. I, outside of people with the whole, you know, foolish and like it just seems like. And I and I, and I blame this to a great degree on social media. To a great degree on social media, people only want to be around each other when there's high levels of foolishness going on. When it's when it's destructive, because it can get you likes, clicks, and views. Everybody's everybody's tuned in. Yeah. Everybody's watching. Like if you want to if you want to grow your following almost overnight, start a fight compilation page. Because mm -hmm. they'll they'll click 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 click. And, but I'm like. But let somebody come through and try to start some relation like, to try like, to uplift somebody. Uplift you. Try to empower you to make a decision to be better than what you were yesterday. If I could do that. See, people don't realize this page could be 20 times bigger than what it is if we pick a side. And no matter what it is, whether we are pandering toward women mm -hmm. or where we're just bashing women. If we were just over here bashing women, right. guaranteed. Shoot it up. Yeah. Like, if we were just, oh, well, women never do nothing wrong because Derek Jackson proved it. Right. And I threw his team. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of other pages out there that will just, like, there's nothing that a man, that a woman gets from a man other than money. Right. He's like, oh, well, I got, I got my rose toy, so I don't need nothing other than money. It's like, Whatever happened to, I like people. Like, I like women. I, I've always liked women. I've loved women since I was a little kid. Yeah. And I was like, I always like talking to girls. I've always liked that. So I'm like, I have no issue with talking to you. Whether I'm trying to get interested in you, which I'm not interested in you because I'm married. Or just conversations. Like... It's Everything good. is, I got to get something out of you. Oh, if you want to talk to me, send $500 to my cash app. You want to go out with me? I have to take you to these 
expensive, lavish restaurants that you wouldn't even take yourself to. Right. Oh, well, if you want me, you should do this. And and the verbiage in which they they spread this message with is so deceptive. Mm-hmm. Oh, know your worth. So your worth ain't it's not to be loved, be cherished, to be respected in any manner. It's Oh no, I'm literally worth a dollar amount. Anything can be purchased. So if you want me, break bread. It's not if you want me, spend time. If you mm-hmm. want me, care enough to want to know about me. No, no, no. We can skip all that. We can go straight but, to what's your finance night. But for dudes, hey, nah, hey, I don't this I, I don't necessarily want to get to know you that much. I just wanna I just wanna have casual sex. This and meaningless. Like, see, I remember. Uh, I I remember because I used to do it all the time because it's an easy way to actually get. Like I like cooking for women. Mm-hmm. I love cooking. I've been cooking since I was a little kid. I like cooking just because of that, and I like people complimenting my cooking. So I'm like, okay, if I cook for somebody, but hell, now you can't cook for nobody no more because they're like, oh no, I can't be over your house because all you want to do is smash me real quick and then. Get me, uh, get me somewhere else. So I'm like, I was just cooking. I was just, but what I'm saying is, when did we as people get so? And I'm gonna call it what it is. When did people get so scared and terrified of people? Are people really just that bad? Don't get me wrong. I'm not one of those people who are just like, oh my gosh, I want to be around everybody all the time. Yeah. I can I can sit in a room by myself for long periods of time and be quite quite comfortable. However, when I'm kicking and I'm talking to genuine people, I, I feel like I'm being in that space a lot longer. Just like hey, you know, agree. Having these conversations, talking about it, trying to figure this thing out, trying to better myself. If I'm in a room full of sharp and steel, I want to be sharp too. Yeah. So much so that when it gets time for you to get sharper, you can start picking my brain and sharpen your you know what I'm saying? I want to be of service and, and 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 be served as well. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't I don't see that with people no more. I don't see us. I want to know like, why we can't find value other than financial value. All the CEOs taking up large portions of the income, or, or the person who generated the idea getting all the income from the generation of the idea, as opposed to servicing the people who keep the idea afloat. We we lose like that. So it's it's gotten to a point where because we are so disconnected from the people, because we are so into ourselves and wanting to wall off and bubble up and not really interact with this world, the world by default is, is giving us, a, I'm going to call it an unidentified syndrome. And what I'm, I'm going to coin this syndrome as selfish syndrome we've gotten to a point where we so selfish yeah and and so incapable of passing on the knowledge or seeking to do something just for the benefit of somebody else we not selfless by any measure anymore it's crazy and i was thinking about it this didn't start happening to really the 2000s and when technology started taking over and all this social media and extra stuff because it would like for example when you go out to find your spouse the finance was not the first thing you look for i wanted somebody who was going to treat me nice i was going to treat them nice we were going to grow together like we had a good time we right. did stuff now it's like everything you have to do has to be basically if it's not about finance, then it's like, oh, oh, if I take you somewhere, you can't even go just, hey, let's go watch a movie. Why are we going to watch a movie? Why not watch a movie? Right. We watch a movie, chill out, have a good time. If we go eat, whether it's someplace small, big, or whatever. Now, if there is someone that you know for a fact don't want to invest certain time in you, investing time does not mean I will invest all my resources in this one date. But over the time, mm-hmm. if like me and my wife, we uh, we started out, I was dead broke. 
I didn't even have a car. I ain't, uh, my car messed up coming up to Denton, Texas to see me. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, cool. Borrow, uh, borrow money from him for my first date. Okay, cool. My uh, don't get me wrong, have a job, all this other kind of stuff. It's just I had responsibility, meaning I had bills and things I need to take care of versus me trying to do all this other stuff and act like I got a whole bunch of money. Not fake. But over time, okay, cool. I, I've taken my wife to basically everywhere. If you... If you live in Dallas, Texas, you can go to Dakota's. Dakota's is a beautiful steakhouse where it's like got a waterfall on the inside of it. It's very nice. We went to uh, me and uh, for my wife's um for her birthday. Me and uh, him, his wife, my wife, and a couple of our other friends, we went to Perry Steakhouse. Very nice steakhouse We're on the second floor. It's like there's so much you can do. Uh, I, Del Frisco's, I've been there, I've been to a lot of places, but you can't get it all right then and expect that person to value you. The thing about it is we got to a point where instant is taking over. Like, everything, everybody wants their life to be instant mac and cheese, but you never really, like the taste of it ain't really ever, yeah. you know, that mac, the mac and cheese looking for. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? They got the real cheese. It's the, you it's want Big Mama Mac and cheese, you want big but Mac you Mama. want instant taste. You want it to be instant. But you got to understand that in order for Big Mama Mac and cheese to taste like Big Mama Mac and cheese, she had to insert some level of love and care knowing that the people who going to eat this, I want them to really like what they eat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Kraft Mac and cheese, they just doing it for the money. So when you start taking that, you start putting that in your relationships. Okay. No, 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 I'm only dating him for the money. Well, you'll never get to know the person. Mm -hmm. that you'll never get the opportunity to love and be loved. You'll never, ever care what they think about you, and they'll never, ever care enough about you to even think about you for you to care. It's Agreed. Our, if you keep on, if we as people keep moving the way we moving, it's going to become so transactional to where literally I'm going to be able to swipe a credit card down the chick butt cheeks and, and be <laughs> like, all right, that's that's... That's the money necessary. We're going to take it to your place of mine. We ain't got to do all that extra. <laughs> it's crazy because we say we want that instant gratification, but then we talk all this trash about people when they get that instant gratification. Like, oh, well, all he does is treat me like a piece of meat. But all you're offering is a piece of meat. What I'm saying is when you associate how I'm supposed to feel about you, and put a dollar amount on it, that's affecting what you do. I I might go to the store and be like, oh, that's a pretty decent piece of meat right there. That's a really nice steak. I'm going to go home and cook it. Only thing I need to know is how much it costs. Yeah. Once I pay for the meat, it don't matter what I do. I can ground it up. I mm -hmm. can go bury it in the bag. It don't matter. At that point, I own the meat. So when you get to these women or these dudes or these people who genuinely just reduce everything down to a dollar amount then obviously you like oh he's just treating me like a piece of meat because he only looking at you as something he could purchase you you are just a moment you no different than the steak one of the things i thought that was so crazy this whole know your value but you should know your value is more than a price. You should know your value on all spectrums. When you start talking about value and work, then, hey, granted, I feel like you should want more from your job. Yeah. But to start it off because your job is funding your home life, yeah, we need to start talking dollars. Yeah. We got to talk dollars first. But let's be real. Even if you were Mason making decent money, let's just say the United States makes less than $50,000 average. average and that's just facts it's not opinion it's just facts yeah. so let's just say you have a job right now that let's say it pays you $65,000 $70,000 a year mm -hmm. that's more than average but let's just say at that job they treated you like trash every single day would you be cool with being at that job knowing that they pay you more than Mental, uh, then whatever the average person, 
but they treat you bad every day. They talk to you with disrespect. Right. They and you don't get to leave when you want to. They and uh, they demean you as a person. Would you truly say, "Oh, well, I'm making more than the average person"? No. Like, I don't need this. Kevin Gates said it, but he was like, "Man, find love when he find his purpose." Now, don't get it confused. Some some people find their purpose in their job and their occupation because majority of us gonna spend a lot more time at work than we will at home, or at least active hours. Because you know, if you're gonna include sleep, that's eight hours where you you're not conscious, yeah. but you know, <laughs> is what it is. So, you, some people find it in their occupation, and that's what the world is driving us towards now. But I remember there was a time where people found their purpose in life. Through the name and the family. Yeah. I need to be successful so I can push the name because the name was the brand. Mm-hmm. When you see when you see my last name on anything, I want you to instantly think, uh, oh, some level of perfection, quality, and just a reassurance that whatever you reached out for uh reach out to us to get done, it will be done and it will be done in immaculate fashion. But now, like I said. Nobody care about that. Yeah. You know, so nobody really concerned about what they name is or what the weight that it carries. Nobody, people yeah. have just thrown that to the wayside. I just wish people would, I understand we have to survive as people. So yes, you need to have some type of finance in today's time to survive. Right. But if that's the only thing you're looking for, you can't complain when that's all you get, oh, well, I got the finance, but he don't treat me right. She don't treat me right. Oh, she, she left me right once I lost my job. If all you offered her was your job. If all you were to her was a check. Like, it's, it's just where this oh, world's coming to. That's where we at. That's what you got to read. At that point, that's where we are. Yeah. The reason why she left soon as the money ran dry is because that's what that's where we are as a society. We prefer money over people. Yeah. That's it. We prefer financial. I don't even want to call it stability because there's an instability when you got the biggest house on the block with only one person living in it. Why? Because you you care more about the aesthetic than the actual fulfillment of the purpose. Hey, I bought all these rooms to fill them with people. Yeah. Like I got a I got this super large refrigerator full of food. I I can't eat it all, I ain't, but ain't Look, nobody in here to eat it with. Like let's be real, if I had a big mansion, you think I'm gonna not move my mama in there and some? Uh, hey, if my brother won't come, cool. More than likely, he may not. But if he do, cool. I'm a, I want people around me that won't be around me. Right. Because it's like there's nothing like having. Those family ties that uh, that love. Like I was teasing my mom. I was like, "Man, if you ever need to shoot, you go on, come live with me." She was like, "No, nah, because y'all want a babysitter." And I'm like, "Well, part of that is a babysitter, I mean, but it's I like I, I love you. Like yeah. you never have to work again. You know, like hey, we be good. Like hey, you watch the kids on the weekends. We good. Yeah." Simple. You got your weak life. But, but the idea of being with family, friends, people that love you, people being around you. Like, if you go on vacation, the best way I like going on vacation with people I genuinely care about, we go together. I don't want to go on vacation by myself. No. It's like, I want, and do what? What I'm saying is, Life, the experience of life is meant to be shared. Yeah. It's not, it's not, although the grave is a solo journey and the entry point is the act of being in this thing we call life, it's not meant to be a solo journey. It's not meant to be just you and the world. It's meant to be you and the people, right? Yeah. The people you love and the experiences you have with those people. That's what you remember. Because the people going to bring the emotion. The people going to bring the assistance. The people going to bring, whether it be hard times or good times. 
when you are with people and we are all going through the same thing, experiencing what we're experiencing, that gives you the opportunity to show your metal. Yeah. If, if 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 right now a, a, a grizzly bear ran through the door, whether me and you hopped up off the couch and ran away or found a way to fight him off, we going to remember, man, remember yeah. when we were sitting on the couch mm-hmm. and the grizzly remember bear that ran. grizzly bear? Yeah, yeah I yeah. remember that I one. remember that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you remember those things because you shared them with someone like if you ever take it back to the day and most people um, well if you old school you knew back in the day christmas time you really didn't get a lot of stuff you may got a few things and all that kind of stuff you may even shop at the dollar store and all that stuff for the presents oh, y'all dude. wrap them up and everything Christmas morning, y'all having a great time. I just remember hanging out with my family. I remember us having a good time watching Christmas movies. Me and my mom and my brother would still, to this day, watch the year there was no Santa Claus because my mom always said she was Mother Nature. I was the heat miser and my little brother was the snow miser. And we would argue back because me and my brother argued all the time back and forth Be- and it, it was just that kind of dynamic that it's like even when i uh get old and may forget so many things i probably still will never forget those those moments, those moments. Yeah. and i'm like hey if god willing i would like uh, uh, i won't die with those moments i won't hey hey, hey i remember this I remember, I remember when my son came into this world. I remember when my daughter came in. I remember everybody at the hospital and everything. Yeah. I remember me uh, uh, about to say something to my gr- uh, to my mother in law because she thought she was gonna stay in the on um, what you call when my son was born versus me being in the delivery room when my son was born. I was like, no, 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 no that, how that's not gonna work. <laughs> Nobody's better. But all those are memories and things that you can cherish with each other. N- nothing about finance do I give two craps about. Right. Only reason I want finance is to take care of my family. Right. And what in order for you to understand the significance of family, almost everybody in here can remember a time, especially if you had kids, to where it was a momentous occasion with people. Right, I know when I get paid, and yeah. I can't tell you nothing about the. Ch- I, <laughs> bro, this is on direct deposit. I don't even mm-hmm. look no more, bro. I don't I'm, either. I, there's no more money's in there. I, I just know it's in there. I don't even remember the first check I got. I don't, <laughs> but I do remember when uh, Super Smash Bros mm-hmm. came out on Nintendo oh, sixty four. Hell, I remember. <laughs> What was it? Um, we were at Rich's house. This is like gotta be at least be 10, 12 years back. Everybody over uh, uh they were doing the uh, crawfish bro, and we over uh, everybody over there playing Smash Brothers hey, and everything. It's like it's it's just time spent with friends. We enjoyed it, we had a good time, with nobody tripping, no man, fighting. Man, I remember I remember parties I went to. Where it's just like, ain't nobody got no stack for nobody. I'm just yeah. trying to get danced on. And that's <laughs> it. I'm not concerned about nothing else. She look good. I know I look good. If I call over, she going to dance. Hey. That's it. We ain't work. She don't care. We both in college. I'm broke. You broke. Stop. Mm-hmm. Come kick it with me. See how we can have fun as two broke people in college. What's up? Hey. hey. It's it's the simple things in it's life. The simple things. I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm done deal. This has been another episode of Sub for the People. Hold it down. Y'all be easy.